guys, it's Miranda Shortcake. I know I look super tiny right now, but today I'm going to do another review of these Strawberry Shortcake comic books, so let us get started. We're going to start with issue number 5. So in issue 5's first story, Sweet and Sour Grapes enter the annual food truck festival and they want to win a trophy so they can hold on to it for a year until the next winner claims it. But the problem is, they always get beat out by someone else, and they can't figure out why they can't win. So to summarize it, Strawberry goes along with them and tries to figure out what the problem is. And even though she goes through a lot of ideas, she just can't figure out what is going on until she disguises herself, which I thought it was a funny point that they made that when she so-called disguised herself, everyone could still tell who she was, which makes it more realistic because on nearly every single TV show, all someone has to do is put on a pair of glasses and literally no one can tell who they are anymore. So I'm glad they brought that to light that just because you put on a different outfit, it doesn't mean you look like a completely different person. Like I was saying, eventually Strawberry ventures off and tries to figure out what the problem is. And she figures out that everyone's food seems to be more popular because they put cereal on them. They're kind of like a few parodies of certain foods like Fruit Loops. I don't want to spoil the ending, but let's just say that Sweet and Sour Grapes decide to put cereal on their dish too. And I'm sure you can determine the outcome from that. And in the second short story, it was mainly just about Plum injuring herself and being upset that she can't participate at the dance in her dance studio. So Apple Dumplin devises a plan to get her to enjoy the dance party too. Now moving along to issue number six. I particularly liked this one because it felt a little more relatable in some circumstances. In the beginning, Orange Blossom is upset because she purchased a whole lot of fans and she has nothing to do with them. Since she thought there was going to be a major heat wave, but instead it turned out there was a lot of rain, so no one would need the fans for any particular purpose. So Raisin Cane, who apparently just likes to sneak around and sneaks up on people, she even admits that herself that she likes to stay quiet so she can eavesdrop on people's conversations and their personal problems. She offers to help Orange with her marketing skills, and Raisin's idea is for Orange to, I guess, technically open a YouTube channel. They, of course, didn't call it YouTube, but it looked kind of like it. But Raisin said that Orange should start posting videos about her products to get more traffic to her general store. And Orange does just that, trying to make videos. She's hesitant and nervous at first, and Raisin berates her for it. Eventually, Raisin Cane critiques Orange and tells her that she needs to be more personal with her viewers. And I loved here that Orange said that her life isn't interesting enough to talk about with her viewers. And when I read that, I was like, yes, Orange, yes, she understands. Because I can relate to not having, you know, a very interesting life. It made me laugh because it reminded me of my own life. Anyway, what they come up with is Orange starts talking about wacky topics in addition to talking about her products. And when she does this though, she talks about the product for like a brief moment and then she reverts to some crazy story time like video or starts talking about ball pits or soup and the commenters feed off of Orange's story times and they're more interested in those than the actual product themselves. And multiple times in the story, they always say don't read the comments, even though the comments that they left on the video weren't negative necessarily, though people can leave some crazy comments. The whole YouTube channel thing doesn't work out very well with Orange. She even put on like an orange wig for her videos to play like this crazy character. Let me just check something real quick because I need to reference things. And in the end, Cherry Jam assures Orange that her marketing strategies were fine to begin with, and it turns out that the fans were of use after all. Now in the second short story, it kind of had a repetitive theme of the characters hearing odd noises, and then they get scared for no reason and they wonder what it is. And this same recurring theme always happens in Berry Bitty City and Berry Bitty Adventures, 
and I kind of feel like it's worn out and tired. Like maybe if they switched it up a little bit and say there actually was a monster or something actually was lurking in the berry patch instead of a person or some animal or something that fuzzy. Maybe if they went towards a different route, even though I know they won't because strawberries for kids. <laughs> I think it would make it a little more appealing. So in the second story, Blueberry and Sour Grapes are at Blueberry's bookstore and they hear odd noises. They get scared and then Huckleberry Pie shows up and they tell him about the noises and then he gets scared. But let me just show you a little brief moment in this comic book that I think some fans will... I don't know. I'll just let you decide for yourself. I want to know what your opinion is on this picture in the book. They're holding hands. So yeah, I'm sure you Blueberry and Huck shippers will relish in that moment. As I stated, the ending is pretty predictable. Turns out that Bosley Bookworm was sleeping and snoring and they were just startled by that. Again, I kind of wish they would stop using this theme in the comic books, but I guess if you need like a short second story, then I guess they would like to do something like that. Okay guys, that's all I have to say for issues number 5 and 6 of these Strawberry Shortcake comic books. I kind of feel like as the comic books progress, they're kind of getting a little more berry bitty adventures-ish. So I hope that the future comic book stories uh, continue to appeal more to a general audience instead of for like a five-year-old. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Miranda Shortcake 2 if you want to see more videos from me. And leave a comment below telling me what you think about that little picture of Blueberry and Huck in the comic book. I will see you all next time in another video and in the meantime feel free to check out some of my other projects and I will see you all next time. Bye guys!